We now have with us Professor Narendra Bhandari, who is a space scientist of Chandrayaan first mission of ISRO. Thank you so much for joining us on Beyond, sir. Right, so what can you tell us about the position of the Vikram lander? Right, Professor Bandari was amongst the first group of scientists who worked on the USA's Apollo moon samples and also USSR's lunar moon dust brought back from the moon. He was also a member of the Moon Mission Task Force and the Science Advisory Board of Chandrayaan 1 of ISRO. Now, India's Chandrayaan 3 has made history by being the first spacecraft to successfully make a soft landing near the moon's south pole. Chandrayaan 3's success has made India just the fourth nation to land a craft on the moon. Right, sir, I believe there was a slight issue with the line there. I hope you can hear me now. We were asking you what's the current status of the Vikram lander and when can we expect the deployment of the Pragyan rover? You see that uh, it was a picture perfect landing and that 20 minutes of terror is behind us. We are looking for the very exciting signs <coughs> in the next 14 days. Uh, everything on the two instruments, lander and the rover are in good health. They have been tested and they are in communication with the, the orbiter of Chandrayaan 2. So everything is working perfectly. Now already the ramp is out uh, we waited for some time for the dust to settle. You know, lunar uh, surface is full of dust, we call regolith. And as it landed, there was a lot of dust around that has settled down now. And the ramp has been uh, extended. And the Pragyan is uh, ready to come out and survey the uh, area near the lander. Uh, I think cameras are working. They already sent the pictures. Uh, they look perfect. And uh, now we have many instruments uh, on the lander and many instruments on the rover. And uh, we are planning to have all this data so that next time if somebody decides to have a base near the South Pole, then this will be the right, right thing to do. Right, sir. It was absolutely a feather-like landing that we all have been talking about here. Now that the Chandrayaan has landed, what happens next? Also shed some light on what kind of data is expected once the rover is deployed. First of all, we have a thermal profiler, a plasma uh, uh, instrument to see what plasma is coming from the sun. Keep take. You see, uh, lunar dust is charged because uh, particles from the sun uh, come and strike it. There is no atmosphere. So uh, we want to know all these conditions. Uh, then, of course, there is a seismograph. And, uh, you know, there is a lot of talk about whether lunar distance has been changing over time, uh, maybe a few centimeters every year. So for that, uh, we have this American instrument of retro reflector. So these uh, four or five experiments will be done. And simultaneously, uh, we will study the chemistry, what are the elements present there, and uh, the minerals. What are the minerals present in lunar soil? Because every area of the moon is different, and this is unexplored. So any further work, you know, uh, uh, Chandrayaan 1, as you remember, found for the first time water there. All Apollo samples and uh, the Russian samples did not show any trace of water in their samples because they were from the equatorial region. That's why on Chandrayaan 1, we decided to go and look for water at the poles. And surely enough, all our instruments, there are four in all, found water or traces of water there. Uh, this is in frozen uh, condition because the uh, temperature is very low. All the water from the moon goes there and gets uh, deposited. And that is why there is much interest in the 
south pole region and north pole region uh, billions of right. tons of water lay buried there right well professor bandari thank you so much for joining us on the show with your insights on this okay it has been a pleasure